It's just another expiration Friday. Oh, oh, oh. checking on my trade. Yeah, yeah, hoping to find a what? Yep, a pile of money. Here we are on Friday. Expiration Friday. Hey, it's also Friday the 13th. That's scary. I actually remember seeing that movie as a young child. <laughs> Me and my friend John Bueller went to the movies, drive-in movie theater with my cousin, my co- older cousin, who was probably, how old is he? He's got to be close to 10 years older than me. My older cousin and his girlfriend, me and John Bueller, I remember we got out and my cousin Bobby was okay that we got on top of the roof of the car and watched the movie from there. But half the time, my eyes were closed, but I acted like they weren't. I'm not scared, are you? I was scared to death, Jason. <laughs> Where are we at? It's expiration Friday. Oh, oh, oh. doing it live as usual. Stream of consciousness. Consciousness is what they call it. When you tune into these videos, obviously not one word scripted, except for that opening intro, right? Yeah, it is Friday. So we got that one down. Let's take a look at the trades so far this week. Here are the different, the different underlying companies that we traded on Monday for a total of $2,140 on Tuesday. We went through Palantir, Amazon, Deer, Target, collected $1,350. Uh, Wednesday only had one trade. I think I had a meeting on Wednesday, something. <laughs> I, was telling, <laughs> I was telling Kid One and Sparkle this morning. So Sparkle and I went to the gym, had a nice uh, back and bicep workout, little stroll around the indoor track. And then I was up here looking at different stocks and what the market was doing, just just swilling coffee from my electronic coffee cup. And then it like, I had this moment. I don't know if you have these moments. I get them from time to time more now than ever. Like a, it was like a tingling peace and joy, like went through my body and my soul. And I'm like, I got to go down and tell, tell them when I, the thought that just went through my mind and I came barging in to the bedroom because Sparkle is changing out her a wardrobe in the closets, that's plural, in the closets in the master bedroom to her winter, her fall and winter wardrobes. So I came crashing in, they were talking, Stella was running around acting like, you know, just dogging around like dogs do. And I said, I got an epiphany I need to share with you. And they're like, what? I'm like, my life is so amazing. Well, yeah, hello, you got us. And I'm like, I know, aside from that, I drink coffee in the morning. I trade stock options during the day. And then I drink wine at night. <laughs> what could be more perfect? Nothing. That's right. Nothing. So on Thursday, that was yesterday. I apologize for not uh, coming on and sharing my trades with you yesterday. But here's what we did. Bought the clothes some uh, on semiconductor, which would have been just fine. But I thought it was two bucks. And I was taking $17,000 of risk off the table and... What is on doing today? I got my eyeballs on them today for another put. They're down almost 3%. So, you know, that's peace and love, peace and love. Tesla, Amazon, Datadog, a lot of um, rolling went on. So I rolled some calls, rolled some put on Datadog. I went from like 88 to 84. Riot, I went from 9 to 850. Moving everything out of next week's expiration because I will be in You know where. Viva La Mexico, drinking cerveza, eating guacamole. I bought 400 shares of PBF Energy. So I bought them at what? 4609 PBF currently trading at 4734. So that one looks good. The other ones I bought yesterday, wow, wow, wow. I shouldn't say that because Fastly is down today. What is Fastly at? Check the big board. Hold on one second, please. Fastly. Mm-mm-mm. At fourteen eighty eight, so I might buy. Ooh, almost down a dollar. Might buy four hundred more shares today just to get to around one thousand. This is going to be a company that is uh, taken out. It'll be gobbled up by a bigger company between now and I don't know a year from now, which will then provide a great little premium. I'm going to trade options on them from now until they're taken out. But that's just my thesis. But believe me, this is far from. This is far from investment advice, just from the research I have done. McDonald's finally got a hold of some McDonald's. What are they doing? 
Mickey D's. Where are you at? Where are you at, Ronald McDonald? <laughs> Who doesn't like McDonald's? Not a soul. There isn't one person walking the earth that doesn't like McDonald's. Hey, they're up to 248.70, bought them at 246.52. And there was a one second there. I'm like, I should just wait till tomorrow till this thing goes green to sell covered calls. And I'm like, nope, get it done now. In case I wanted to just, you know, lay on the couch and watch base playoff baseball today. I have a couple of games to catch up on, so don't tell me any scores. 247.50. <laughs> Sold the calls for 247.50. So we'll just keep rolling, 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 because I want to collect the next dividend on McDonald's, which next ex dividend date is November 30th. Dollar sixty seven a share. So we want those dollar bills there. Um Canadian Solar rolled that 24 put out to the 27th. Ended up at $2,054 yesterday. And at that moment, we were at $5,619 for the week. And then today, so far, we've rolled Walgreens. We went from 2350 to 24. Just put a couple, little bit of pocket change into, you know, part of my tipping money for next week for Mexico. And then Excellus. Um, technology as we rolled out and down, even though it wasn't under pressure. So I think Excellus is over 160 in the 160s today. Look at that company if you you know want to look into a company you've probably never heard of, and just to see what kind of dollar bills they print and how good they look. Rolled it down from 150 to 145. We got one contract. They're only it's a monthly, so you know I'm not a huge fan of trading monthlies, but it's a great company with a lot of volatility. So on the trading side, collecting premium pretty good collected 345 and reduced my risk and took some collateral off the table. So that's that. Let's take a look at the portfolio and see what's going on. Hey, we're up a little bit today, almost 3,000 positions expiring today. Not a lot because I've done a lot of work rolling already. This week, we've got um, Undfeiza. They have ex dividend of November 9th. So we'll be looking to collect that and then deciding if we're going to trim our position in Undfeiza for some tax loss harvesting. They're on the chopping block as well. SoFi, let's see what we can do. If we can roll this, because they're at 826 today, down 1.51%. 750 calls, obviously those would be removed from my possession today unless we rolled it. I think we could roll it and still make a nice return, probably over 20% easy as far as annualized. So let's just take a look. So we need to cover the 77 cent a debit and we are at, yeah, we can roll that thing and catch a couple bucks, some more tipping money, right? So that's $28 on 1500, 28 divided by 1500 divided by, we're adding 14 days to the trade. So divided by 14, multiply that by 365. So that's an annualized 48.6%. That's called a what? It's called a no-brainer. $20 bills I didn't have, and I'll just deliver them. Okay, we're not going to collect 28 right now. How about 26? We'll put 26 on the board on the covered call roll. And I think we did math the other day, and we were at like $24. So I'll take two more dollars all day and every day. Did it go to the pending board, or did it get filled? Let's see. It's on the pending board. So we'll keep an eye on that, but we'll roll that today just for a little extra scratch for the pocket. Uh, Sound Hound at 90%, but it's downtown to Chinatown today, so we'll let those expire at full profit. And then next green day for Sound and the Hound, we will sell covered calls on those five contracts. Square, aka Block, that's what we paid. So we overpaid You know when I was assigned those shares. So we're just collecting premium until those are eventually called away. Right now, Square is down today what? Where are you at? Down 3.45%. So not a good day for covered calls on Square. We'll let that expire at the full profit. And then next green day, we'll sell covered calls on that position. Ooh, look at that. So UPS, this one's actually in a perfect position to roll. We paid 157.50. We want to maintain possession through November 10th, which is the next X 
dividend date, $1.62 a share. What do we have? 300 shares. I know I already showed you this math before, but why wouldn't I want an extra $486 and extra premium, right? Right. I was looking at Bank of America possibly selling some calls into earnings, but it just, it wasn't worth the potential payoff by waiting until they report their earnings on Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday, which should be good. So far, City and JP Morgan have reported very good earnings. Still not getting a lot of um, tailwind from that though. So what were we looking at? UPS? Mm -hmm. Looking at UPS. Okay, so they have earnings next week. So we should catch some nice tailwind with regard to volatility and premium on rolling the UPS covered call into earnings. I don't really want any positions. Oh, wait, what did I say? The 26th, right? This actually works out perfect. Yeah, see? So I'll roll it to the 27th. Hey, you shouldn't trade through earnings unless you don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I really don't. If, you know, UPS goes up by 10 bucks, if we want to maintain ownership, we'll just look at what we have to do to get out of a 157.50 position at that time, or you just let it go and you've collected a bunch of money. So let's check the roll. So I need to cover four cents. If we go through earnings, which would be the 26th. So if we trade through expiration Friday, October 27th, we're going to collect tons of cash, right? Tons of cash at the 408. Now you could also look at, oh, well, look, I can go up $2.50 a share, right? So if you think UPS is going up on earnings, then you can roll it on up. You can go to 160. You can even go to 162.50, right? Yeah. I mean, you can go up all the way to the moon if you want because of volatility. Plus, you only have a four cent debit. But I don't know how much UPS is going to move on earnings, if at all. Because right now you got JP Morgan, it reported amazing earnings, and it's only up a couple of percentage points. So if we're just looking to be a trader and collect premium, we would just stick with the 157.50, which would be like the definition of a wheel. But if you did math and say, well, what about the 160? So that'd be $2.50 per, right? 250 times the 300 shares. So that'd be $750. So say it had a nice earnings and it bumped it through the 160, you would add 750 on top of what you collected here on the 301 roll. You know what I'm saying? Then you also put, protect your position more regarding that next X dividend date. So let's look at that. So remember that 750, put this on the board. Because of that volatility, you're looking at still almost $900 plus the 750, okay, 891. So plus 891. It could be a sixteen forty one dollar bill trade, and then if you rolled out of it in case it crashed through the one sixty because you wanted to maintain ownership, then you lock in that dividend. So this is this is <laughs> this is why I rush downstairs to tell Kid One and Sparkle about the euphoria euphoria I have of drinking coffee in the morning, trading options during the day, and drinking wine and watching sports at night. <laughs> oh man, living the dream, I guess. That was the point though. It was always the point. From the time I was a little kid, growing up, didn't have much. I remember when my mother and stepfather divorced in 1989. So they waited until my graduation open house to tell me, oh, guess what? We're, re we're divorced. And then next thing I know, me and my mother are moving in with my aunt and uncle at their trailer. So my bedroom that summer was the living room couch and it had that popcorn sparkly ceiling. If you know that kind of ceiling, then you're, I don't know if you're pretty cool, 
but you probably are. And I would stare at that sparkling popcorn ceiling in the trailer of a home that my neither of my parents owned. So we were vagabonds. And it hit me like a ton of bricks, which was, this is not going to be my life. I am going to control my own destiny. Now, I wasn't off to a great start because I left for school that that year, that fall. Freshman at the Harvard of the Midwest, Vincennes University Junior College. I went to that school because my buddy Rob Morocco scored only a 9-10 on his SAT. <laughs> but him and I had plans of going to college together, so we did that. I had a 1.6 GPA my freshman uh, first semester, I had a 4.2. So that was like honors, 4.2 in keg stands. But I, even though college didn't turn out to be my thing, I still knew that I was going to find a thing. And I did that with real estate. But now I'm looking at possibly an encore. Is this an encore? Options and dividends? I think it feels like an encore because I've been semi retired for, I don't know, six years, six years plus. Having a good time, I'm telling you that. Freedom is very underrated. Freedom is everything to me, but I still enjoy learning and I have so much to learn with options and dividends that I literally wake up every morning like a kid in the candy store thinking about what am I gonna what am I gonna look at today? What am I gonna trade today? Hey, what dividends coming next? All of that is very exciting to me. So if I could do something that I love doing and collect the dollar bills, then it's like my old mentor Jim Rohn said, I don't need the money, but I still like to collect the money. <laughs> so this is the kind of excitement that we have. We, hey, we've already lost a little on that action right there on that roll. But I'm still interested in that rolling out to the 160 into earnings, collecting $870 and then kind of seeing what happens. Let's see if we can put that on the board. We could probably put it on the board right now. Let's see. Up and out on the UPS roll. And come on. Sparkle needs a new pair of shoes. So we'll leave it on the board for now. Watch that. But I will be looking to roll that out and up today. So we should have two on the penny board. Nope. So that means SoFi filled. Did it fill for the 26 bucks we were hoping to collect? Let's find out. So SoFi roll just for pocket change. So there's our cost basis, 753. And I'll tell me right here. Tell me right here on my phone, but let's roll down and just see. Scroll down. There's our $26. So put that on my little notepad. Hold on. So fi, so good. Roll the call. 752 contracts, 1027, 26 bucks. Every dollar counts. It really does. I did make my wife a deal today as we were walking around the track after our back and bicep workout. I said, listen, because she was telling me about this fall clothing exchange because she's trying to talk me into remodeling the kitchen. I mean, we already remodeled the kitchen. Back to that story in a moment. She's trying to talk me into remodeling the bathroom. The bathroom is perfectly fine. <laughs> it has a big jetted tub. It has a big shower. Double vanity, walk-in closet through the bathroom, got a bidet, all kinds of like, how could you want anything more? Well, she wants to remodel the bathroom. And she said, just think if I remodeled the bathroom, because she already has a plan drawn up, I could have a bigger walk-in closet and then I won't have to rotate my clothes. I said, look, let's do a deal. So we have a regular, like a double door closet inside the master bedroom. And then we have a walk-in closet through the master bathroom. We share the walk-in closet, and then she has full reign, basically 82% of the other closet. I said, well, what if we moved everything out of the double door closet? I put my things in there, and then you had the entire walk-in closet. How would that work? She goes, that might work. I said, look, I'll work you a deal. I'll do that. I'll make that deal with you if you could commit to getting the family budget down to 10000 a month. And we already made that deal last summer when I agreed to have the kitchen remodeled for $80,000. That's what it cost us. A perfectly good kitchen remodeled into a perfectly good kitchen. Yet, I'm um, less $80,000. <laughs> she agreed to the deal then, hasn't stuck to it one single month. But now she's claiming that she's going to really stick to it. So, and just think about it. We have no debt. 
We have zero debt, no house payment, no car payments, no debt, no worldly debt to a single soul in the world. We have a fully funded 529 for the kids, for college, et cetera. And you can't get the budget to 10 grand or under a month. <laughs> Something isn't right. Cause you know me, I'm just, as my friends at Leonard Skinner said, I'm just a simple man. I could literally, and I have, as you know, I've lived in a trailer two different times in my life that summer in 1989. And then another time between like ages 20 and a half and 21 and a half with my father lived in his trailer. So my point was what, I'm not sure, except that, um, we need to get the family budget to 10,000 or under, and then it would be the swan song between now and forever, sleep well at night, swan. So I'll keep you posted on that. In fact, I might do something so crazy as to share the family budget with you each month, like line item, just to see the progress that is made, because then it's just game over, right? It's complete game over. I even shared that one little scene with John Goodman from the movie, The Gambler with Mark Wahlberg, when he's sitting at the bar and he basically telling him, this is how you get freedom with regard to when you're up money, right? Watch that scene, Google it. You can find that little scene. Just, um, it's called F I think you can look it up on YouTube, like F U money. I'm not going to do it for you now. Cause I've rambled on long enough. <laughs> Go to YouTube, look up, um, movie, the gambler F U money. Just watch that scene. It's like two minutes long. I love that scene because that's how I feel about my life. I just need my spouse, my wife to cooperate. And she will because she, her and I are in it together, in it to win it. Uh, where were we? UPS. Is that still on the board? Yeah. So I'll roll that and collect some dollar bills, roll it out to 160, hopefully put another uh, 250 per share in my pocket. Um, winnie, win, win. It's down in its luck today. So down in its whiskey, down almost 3% to 9101. And if you remember the video from, I don't know what day that was, Tuesday, it was knock, knock, knocking on 95's door. So it will come back to me, but it's not going to be today. So I'll just let that ride out into the sunset at full profit, and then we'll wait for a green day on Win Resorts. I'm not concerned whatsoever regarding owning the ownership of Win Resorts because they print money. ExxonMobil, 105 put that should have been a five contract trade, but it was like right at the bell one day. I don't know what day that was last Friday, maybe, maybe this Monday. I don't know. And I tried to get five contracts on the board, one filled. And then the rest didn't fill before the bell rang and those uh, contracts were removed. So that's all we have expiring today. Um, but I am looking at a handful of trades, possibly some puts get the big Mac fired back up here. One of which would be on semiconductor. Where are they at currently? 89.92. So like there's different um, companies, Datadog under 90 on uh, semiconductor under 90. I have different numbers I'm trying to like create in my head that I build this, you know, catalog of information that I can refer to without always checking notes so that I can watch these watch the stocks and my watch list more effectively. Okay. So for instance, and I know this is getting to be rambling, but I just want to show you part of the excitement I have in all of this. So let's, so I've come up with, and I, I shouldn't say I've come up with, cause I haven't, I've watched some guy's video on YouTube and he had this quick rating system for growth stocks and I've tweaked it just a bit. Mine's actually a little bit more conservative than his. So for instance, then the the quick value, uh, determining quick value. Uh, I haven't named it yet. I was going to call it the BVR, the BART value rating. <laughs> Actually, that's not bad. Um, the BVR, the BART value rating. So if you look at, if we go to summary, this is on seekingalpha.com. You can find market cap and all of this information on so many things, Yahoo Finance, et cetera. But if we look currently right here on Datadog, one of the companies that's a real sweetheart, I think, you know, look into it. I think you'll like it too. It has a market cap of 28.59 billion. Okay, so how do you determine market cap? Well, it's based on shares outstanding and price per share, right? That's a, that's the simple definition of market cap. And you could reverse engineer this and come up with, you know, and this is part of my learning process. 
that I'm trying to create for myself. So if you come up with what, so 28 billion, right? 590 million, mil, 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 mil. So that should be the number, 28 billion, 590 million. And then we divide it by the current share price of 8830, okay? Divided by 8830. We'll come up with, let's see, where is that decimal? So there's three, there's six. Okay, so it should be about 324 million shares outstanding. Okay, so 324 million shares outstanding. So if we go to financials, 324, keep that number in mind, 324 million shares outstanding. We scroll down to... Where is it? There it is. So there's diluted weighted average shares outstanding around 320 million. Now, obviously this number changes because this is a trailing number. This is trailing. So they're, they likely have released more shares. A lot of these growth companies, as you know, pay their employees with stocks, stock options, et cetera. You know, the biggest um, proponent of that has been Palantir. If you've ever looked into Palantir, technologies, they created a very interesting system from the moment they launched in 2003 until just, I think this year, they were paying their employees with 100% stock option match. So if you were making 200,000 each year, they would give you $200,000 worth of stock each year. Well, they just changed that. And I think it's now a 26% match in stock options on your salary. If it, hopefully some of that's making sense. So if we look at that, there's that number to kind of determine, well, that's how market value is determined. So the, the BVR, the BART value rating goes a little bit something like this, hit it. So I'm looking for a value rating of 19.5 or under, okay? The lower, the safer, the lower, the better. I shouldn't say the better, the lower, the safer. How's that sound? Because some growth stocks are just now collecting that wind beneath their wings. So their revenue is really just now beginning to ramp up into what is hopefully the moon. So if we look at earnings, right, we go to the last quarter. They had $509 million in earnings. So we get out the old abacus, we do 509. Let's just do the whole thing. 509.46, and that's a quarterly number. So we multiply that by four, we end up with 2.037 billion. 2.037. Okay, keep that number in mind. That's why I had to write it down because you know where my short-term memory is. Then we go back to the summary and we see that we got the 28.59 billion market cap, 28.59 billion. Now we're looking for a number under 19.5. We divide it by 2.037. That is the, the, the most current quarterly earnings multiplied by four. Okay. So we're not looking at trailing. We're looking at forward because growth stocks are doing what they're adding to revenue constantly. At least that's our plan. So what is our number? Is it under 19.5? It is. It's at 14.03. So we're like, Hey, we like that. So that's where I try to reverse engineer. Where do I like these companies that I feel have sky's the limit type of potential, like a Palantir, like a data dog, like an on semiconductor, even like a uh, Tesla or an NVIDIA, you know, running the numbers on those companies has the same effect where you can reverse engineer where you like entry points to be regarding share price and how that is factored into revenue and revenue growth and market cap, okay? So like Palantir, they have a ton of shares outstanding, but what does that mean for the BVR, the BART value rating? Let's find out. So if we go to Palantir and we look at their, if we reverse engineer, okay? Let's try to reverse engineer how many shares outstanding, right? So we got the 3860. So that is a number that's 38,600, 38,600, 111, 111, or as I should say, 000. So there's 38.6 uh, billion on the calculator divided by 17.53. Now this isn't an exact number because again, we're trailing on the shares outstanding, but this should be, there's our decimal point. I know you probably can't see that, but on your abacus, you'll be able to. So if we look, there's three, 
there's six, there's another three. So we have 2.201 billion shares outstanding. So that number should be right around, it should be the number showing that we're gonna look at now, as far as shares outstanding, should be like a 2201. Like a 2201, go to financials, 2201, right? And we've got 21. So we know that they've already, they've got a number of shares they've already released, which they are still doing yearly as compensation for their staff, their employees, which their employees is apparently 80% engineers. Hello. So that's why Palantir is still, it's still got an opportunity. I'm not saying it's value based on its current price because maybe it is, maybe it isn't. A lot of future gains are being priced into it. But that's my little math that I've created. And you're probably rolling your eyes and laughing because everyone knows this. I don't know that. I've, I'm like figuring stuff out on my own that it would be probably easier if I read a book. Um, but it's more fun to just kind of think through it and delve into it on my own. So there's a shares outstanding. So let's look at the revenue and then see how it responds to the BVR, the bar value rating. So if we look at earnings, right, and you look at the last quarter, it was $533 million. So that's not bad, is it? That's pretty nice. So 533.32 million, that's a quarterly number. So now we got 2.133. On the revenue, if we were to take the most recent quarterly earnings, latest quarterly earnings, right? And we annualize it by multiplying that by four. We go back to the summary and we see we got the 38.6 billy, 38.6 on the value divided by 2.133. And what we're trying to find out is, is this number under 19.5? And it is, not by a lot, not as much as Datadog, right? But it still is. It's at 18.09. So if this number gets down, downtown to Chinatown, we're still going to be safe according to our future outlook on Palantir. None of this may make sense. Hopefully it, all of it does because my pea brain is starting to wrap my mind around what type of platform of knowledge. Is that a word I want to use? You know, I'm brand new to this. I'm still green. Uh, November 23rd will mark one year since I've been actually paying attention. <laughs> Traded my very first stock option on November 23rd, 20 and the 22. So looking at my one year anniversary and basically barely scratching the surface as to the possibilities of what could turn into my encore, which is something I do that creates income that I really really enjoy, but also still offers the most insane amount of freedom. Because when you own a bunch of rental properties, where you have a bunch of employees, or you have a big team of real estate agents that work for you, the freedom is automatically hedged and limited based on that. So the less people you have in your life that rely on you, <laughs> it sounds wrong, but you know what I'm saying? The more freedom that you have and you know money rule number one money solves all of your money problems so sparkle and i have a plan together we're going to bring um, sexy back with regard to our monthly financial planning meetings that we used to have for years that we haven't had and i don't know it's been a while it's been it got to be over a year because i've you know i've relaxed and taken my semi-retirement seriously so where were we i think we're just here and i think we're done I do have some trades I'm going to make today, but I won't. I'll trade them through or, or they're going to be, I normally do weekly, as you know, but I'll be doing the 27th as the most, the soonest or earliest trade expiration because of our trip next week. I may not return. As far, that didn't sound right. What I meant was I may not return to a video until I return to town. So if that's the case, Viva La Mexico, I really appreciate you and the time that you spend with me. You and I are becoming best friends in stocks, options, and dividends. Share this with a lovable friend. Like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you in the next video.